What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are doing a preview of Tesla's Q4 2020 financials set to report after the bell on the 27th. We're going to get a ton of epic news um, along with Tesla's financials, the shareholder letter, the conference call. Everyone's wondering if the Plaid Model S is going to drop. So we're going to get into all of that and more. Uh, we're going to start with the boring stuff first, though, the financial estimates. Um, we all know how many cars Tesla delivered in the quarter, 181,000 up from 140,000 in Q3, 91,000 in Q2. So a massive growth in deliveries here. Um, they only delivered a a little over 100,000 or 110,000 in Q4 2019, up to 181,000 in Q4 2020. So expecting to see massive, both sequential and year-over-year -year growth in, de in uh, revenue, cash flow, profits, gross profits, all of that. It's basically teed up to be a home run quarter um, for Tesla. Um, to take a look at the financials of what we had in the past here, um, you can see that Tesla really key inflection point after that Model 3 hit scale in mid-2018 has only had two unprofitable quarters since Q3 2018, and it's actually had uh, five profitable quarters in a row. So this would be the sixth profitable quarter for Tesla in a row uh, through the pandemic. Q4, usually a very strong quarter for Tesla, as you can see on um, the last two Q4s were some of the best except for Q3. Um, strong profitability, strong revenue. I'm expecting nothing else this quarter. We know the record deliveries are there. Um, so I, I have this spreadsheet, this Google Doc, I'll put a link below, where I use to sort of estimate based on how many cars Tesla's delivered and my assumptions on revenue per car, what that will mean in terms of financials. So I plug that in, just an estimate to see what I got there, but $10.7 billion um, in revenue and one 1.2 billion in profit is what I'm expecting for Q4 2020. This would be by far a record for Tesla, their first over 10 billion quarter, their first over a billion in operating income quarter. This would put the business at about a 42, 43 billion dollar run rate and about a four or five billion dollar profit run rate. So Tesla is growing like crazy. I mean, this is basically a home run uh, or just, I don't know, we already know how many cars Tesla sold. So we know this is just going to be an absolute um, gangbuster quarter where Tesla makes money hand over fist. So those are the financials. That's what I'm expecting there. But diving a little deeper, there's a couple things I'm going to be looking for on the conference call and uh, just in terms of what Elon might say um, in his remarks. So Tesla solar installations, this is a business that when they acquired from Solar City, they were doing 201 megawatt um, installations per quarter. That sort of fell off as they switched from a uh, leasing model to a direct sale model. And then as you can see, as the solar roof is started to ramp, they had a huge breakout in Q3 2020 um, with the record quarter since the, the biggest we had seen since 2018. So now I think Tesla you know, they dropped the prices on their solar, lowest cost solar in the U.S. They've also been really ramping that solar roof installations. I believe they said solar roof installations tripled each of the past two quarters sequentially, but we don't know the absolute number. So hard to know how much of that 57 megawatts was solar roof versus normal solar. But this is a real potential bright spot in Tesla's business because I think we're finally at the end of this trough and we're going to start to see Tesla really emerge here um, and start to pick up steam with another. I'm hoping if they can beat that 57 uh, megawatts, of, megawatts of installation, although the seasonally in Q4, there's typically some weakness in that solar business. So I don't know how that'll play out, but this is something I'm really looking forward to because we keep getting promises of Tesla being that energy company. They've had the solar roof out there for a while. So be really curious to see how that's progressing. Along with that is battery deployments. Tesla had a breakout quarter in Q3 um, for battery deployments, a huge record, 759 uh, megawatt hours installed. This was uh, up huge from 477 in the year before Q3, up huge sequentially from 419 in Q2 2020. And overall, if we had to hypercharts here, I can show you just how big of a breakout quarter this has been for Tesla's energy business. I mean, I think Tesla, you know, like I said, the energy business, we keep waiting for them to grow. Elon keeps being like, auto's gonna be as big as energy or energy's gonna be as big as auto, I promise, I promise. And then it hadn't been growing really until we got last quarter this breakout 579 million um, of revenue this was up huge from 370 million the quarter before so you can imagine that this was a combination of that solar installations picking up the battery installations picking up and just really overall a breakout it was the first time they hit a 2 billion run rate on that energy business so I think last quarter I didn't want to get too hopeful but it seemed like a breakout quarter for energy and I'm really hoping that that continues um, going forward now moving to something more exciting that y'all are probably all wondering about is Tesla's Plaid Model S you know the flagship Model S dropped in 2012 hasn't really had that big of an update. Elon Musk been teasing us about Plaid for pretty much years now. And they said at battery day, when we were expecting it to come out in like Q4 2020, this last quarter, they said it was going to come out in late 2021. This is a huge letdown. Everyone forgot about Plaid, but now the rumors have started heating up again. Uh, kilowatts originally said they found one in the wild. Then I tweeted at Elon being like, yo, were you seeing back in the timeline? Is that Plaid Model S coming out? He gets me the winky face. So and then actually, just as I'm recording this now, the kilowatts has actually found another, what looks like even more promising picture of potentially leaked prototype of a Plaid Model S uh, that was driving around near the Fremont factory. So 
adding this all together, I mean, and there's a bunch of, uh, you know, the inventory of Model S and X has been pushed way out. The delivery times have been pushed way out. There was even some Model S and X in certain showrooms that have been removed. So I think this is adding up and the conference call is the perfect time to kind of make this announcement potentially, although I don't know, I think they could have had a full product event, but the Plaid Model S, um, I do, my gut tells me there's like a 75 to 80% chance the Plaid Model S gets announced on the earnings call. This is so, so epic. Um, this is, you know, it's going to totally be the fastest Tesla car ever. It's going to have be the first electric car ever to have 500 miles of range. I mean, everything that everyone thought was cool about the Lucid, the performance, the range, I think that's going to be totally uh, outdone by the Plaid, Plaid Model S. And it's going to be the new supercar of electric cars. Um, and it's going to, I think it might be one of the fastest cars on the road in general, like sub two seconds, zero to 60 time. Like that's insane. And to put a car with 520 plus miles of range, um, on the road, just an incredible feat. And most of that performance, along with that new Plaid powertrain, to me, what's even more exciting than the Plaid Model S just coming out, the sexy sports car, it's not really going to move the needle for Tesla financially. Um, you know, I, maybe it will a little bit like, you know, the, the Tesla does make a lot of gross profit on those Model S and X, but they just don't sell that many units. Nine or 10,000 a quarter versus, you know, 100,000 plus Model 3 and Y, that gap's only widening. We can get a bump from the Plaid, but it's not really a financial needle mover. But the key thing about the Plaid Model S is it has the 4680 cell. Now, this isn't a perfectly sized replica, but I gotta give a shout out to Ian and Ballard um, for hooking me up with this, but it's a 4680 cell. And this, to me, is the most exciting part of the Plaid Model S. The Plaid Model S would be the first Tesla product with these 4680 cells. The 4680 cell at battery day, we all know, hyperchangers, we've been OG on this, um, that Tesla's bringing battery cell production in-house. Instead of using batteries, the 2170 cells that were built by Panasonic, like are in my Model Y, the Plaid Model S is supposed to have Tesla's new in-house house 4680 cell. So we don't know much about the 4680 cell. I mean, Elon put out this slide in uh, battery day saying that we're going to hit a hundred gigawatt hour production run rate uh, by the end of 2022. That's huge. That'd be like more than all of Tesla's battery production in 2020 to build 500,000 cars. So Tesla's planning on building a massive amount of these batteries. Actually, they just put out a video on their YouTube channel of the battery uh, supply production ramp sort of thing. So that to me is an interesting clue that the 4680 production line there at Cato Road is ramping really, really quickly. I actually got a tour of the production line. And even then, that was like four months ago. I mean, they had tons and tons of batteries. They were flying them off the shelves. It looked like they were in the process of improving yield, refining equipment. Um, but I don't know. I think they were... Uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense to be able to build enough batteries for just a few thousand of those Plaid Model S. Like, that's why it's such a genius product to start with the 4680 cell because... You don't, you know, the Model 3 and Y, it's not like you would switch them all over at once. The Model S, a much lower unit volume, plus a much higher cost product so you can amortize these expensive first cells that come off the line. So to me, why as an investor, I'm so excited about the Plaid Model S and kind of as a Tesla fanboy in history of the electric vehicle movement, I almost want to get one, even though I feel like I can't really afford it, but whatever. I kind of want to get one. I, I don't need one, but I want to get one because to me, not because it's fast. I mean, the range is dope. Um, and I hope it has the horizontal touch screen. They make the body look dope, but because it has this uh, 4680 cell, the 4680 cell, I mean, Tesla's value in the long term is how many cars they can produce, which is limited by how many batteries they can produce times the value of autonomy per car. So uh, the key enabler to Tesla scaling beyond a few million EVs per year in the long run, and to me, really changing the course of the trajectory of cost and performance of where the lithium ion industry is headed, they need to commercialize their own in-house battery cell. And the biggest milestone to commercializing this cell is launching the Plaid Model S. So that's why in so many ways, as much as the Plaid Model S is kind of like this toy product, it represents the first product you can buy with Tesla's 4680 cell, this tabless electro design. I don't know if you can see that, um, but no tabs. And I don't know, I'm just kind of blown away that Tesla went from, you know, acquiring Maxwell to doing this top secret R&D project to build battery cells in house. And now we're sitting here just five, or four or five months after battery day, and they're, it looks like ready to deliver the Plaid Model S. So this would be a huge milestone. And this means to me, I mean, I think it's a lot easier to just ramp production once they have it versus that big step of like, we've never commercialized this form factor battery. We've never built our own batteries. Now we're going to put it in a car that people buy that needs to drive hundreds of thousands of miles all around the world or whatever. I mean, that's a huge step for Tesla to have passed the quality assurance there um, and have it actually working in a vehicle, not to mention the cell to structure format, which is potentially an equally big innovation as the tabless electrode, where these cells are actually part of the structural design of that Model S car. So if Tesla can pull this off, it's not about how fast it can go. It's not about 
about the range it can go, but it's about the battery technology under the hood and what that means for ramping Model Y Berlin, which is going to use these 4680s, what that means for the Cybertruck, the semi-truck, the new mega pack projects. A lot of Tesla's growth switching from, you know, 50 to $200 billion in revenue is hinging on the ramp of these 4680 cells. And that's why the Plaid Model S itself may not be material, but the milestone of commercializing the 4680 is. And that is why I think it's so important and worth uh, really, really focusing on. So, um, in terms of other things that I'm looking for, I mean, uh, factory progress, Berlin, that's supposed to be pumping out cars by the end of the year. Austin's supposed to be pumping out cars by the end of the year. Shanghai, Model Y line expanding there. Model 2 coming out in Shanghai. I mean, literally all every factory that Tesla has just exploding and, and booming like crazy. Um, and literally every day you watch these drone videos, this construction footage, it's like incredible progress. Um, so I'm going to be very curious to see or just get a word from Elon. You know, are we still on track for 2021 deliveries for Model Y in Berlin for Cybertruck? What's the status of the semi? Seems like that's getting perpetually delayed. And I think a lot of that just hinges on this 4680, but um, it'll be interesting to get an update from Elon himself. Then FSD, what is the status of the FSD beta program? How many people have it? What's the progress? What are the next steps to roll that out to more people? They've been pretty quiet about that. Is that going to lead to a big increase in FSD pricing when that all happens? Um, I don't know. I think we can get a ton of different color on all that sort of stuff. I mean, just in general, the quarterly conference call, you know, the results are one thing, but I, I like to look a lot more into what Elon says, how the management team says it, how they answer certain questions. There's so much you can read in between the lines. And really, it's just the first time in three months where Elon can like legally talk about the business openly because that's the place to do it is the conference call. And that's why I'm so excited. Like, I'm almost more excited than like what I know is going to announce, but like what I don't know what I don't know. Like, that's why I love every quarter um, and shareholder letter from Tesla. There's always one or two nuggets of surprises, of schemes they're up to, of little tidbits of information um, that just help us understand the bigger story. So I can't wait for Tesla earnings. I'm going to be live streaming, doing my usual uh, earnings party live stream on the channel, waiting for the shareholder letter to come out with all of y'all scheming. So definitely subscribe and tune into that. Of course, when we drop in my extremely in-depth charts, uh, edited analysis the night the earnings drop. So if you if the live stream wasn't good enough reason to subscribe, maybe that is. But anyway, um, happy Tesla earnings week. Would love to know what y'all are expecting for number and most importantly, like Plaid Model S, 4680 ramp, solar, mega pack. What are your schemes that they're going to talk about this quarter? FSD would love to know all of that below. Anyway, uh, this is HyperChange. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers, fun in the channel. Y'all are going to get a very in-depth earnings preview in your inbox on Monday. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.